All right, the next task, it wants us to configure R1 and R2 to prepend one instance of its own AS number to R5, loop back 10 through 12 again, as they're advertised to R3. So that would be, let me get rid of this. So now we're going to configure R1 and R2 to prepend an instance of its own AS. So by default, it already has the AS100 in the AS path. So what we're going to do now is to do an additional instance of that. So the path will look like this. The reason why we want to do that is we want to make the path equal, which we'll see why in a second here, as the R5 routes is being received from R4. So the route that's coming in from R4, it will have 200 and then 100. Okay, this is just to prep for our next task, just to make the AS path equal coming from R1, R2, and R4. So what we're going to do now is to do an AS path prepend. We said it's going to be performed on R1. So same thing, we're going to do an IP prefix list just to match R5 loopback interfaces. Let's then equal 24. Looks like we might have that already. So let me see. Show prefix list. Yes, we do. Okay. So, and then we can just do route map. Let's see what we have uh, so far. Do you show route map. That's right. We have already configured a route map to R3. So all we're going to have to do is just to add the route prepend to the same route map. So permit 10. And then we can do set right here, AS path to prepend a string for the BGP AS path attribute. So AS path prepend and then we want to do AS100. Okay, again, don't forget to clear BGP or route refresh. Now, repeating that on R2. Loop back, permit. Let's enter equal 24. Route map to R3. Permit 10. Uh, match IP address prefix list and then set AS path prepend 100 and don't forget to permit 20 for everything else and get under route BGP 100 to configure the route map and tie that to the neighbor to R3, out, clear, IP, BGP, the neighbor, and then out. Okay, so now if we go back to R3, just do an up arrow, you can see before the route sets coming from R1 and R2 only has a single instance of AS path, which is a 100. And now that we have prepended those routes with another uh, 100, you can see that each of those routes that's being received has to now uh, equal length. Okay, whether it's coming from one, two, or four, or even six. Okay, so that's just to kind of prep ourselves for our next task, which is using the met value, we're going to configure R4 to make R3 prefer itself to reach R5 loop back 10 through 12. Okay, we also have to make sure that R3 always compare met on routes received from the same AS first. All right, so what we're going to try to do here is Currently, R3 is preferring R1 to get to R5, which is this way. But now we're going to do using the met, we're going to make R3 prefer R4 to get to R5. Okay, so first of all, the reason that we made the AS path from R1 and R2 equal to R4 so that we can skip, so you can see that those are actually a higher preference using the shortest AS path. So just to bypass number four, or step four for now, and to continue using the met, we need to make the AS path equal. And now using the met, Currently, R1 is advertising metrics of 111, okay, right here. And then, since the R4 currently is not advertising any metrics, which is zero, this has been made as the worst route due to the command we put in previously, as, uh, as well as the R2. So those actually are worst. So now we're going to have to configure R4 to advertise a metrics that's lower than 111. Okay, so we just, let's say, going to make it 44 for the metrics. So now getting on to R4, the IP prefix list, again R5 loopback, permit 5500 slash 22, less than 24, 
wrap map to R3, permit 10, match IP address prefix list, set metrics 44. Okay, and then allow everything else. Router BGP, that's actually 300. Neighbor, want to say to 1634.4, route map to R3 out. And just make a quick note that we cannot configure the individual commands right here for the neighbor, and that's because we currently have a peer group configured for R4 going towards R3 and R6. You can see right here, we have a peer group called S200, and that's currently tied into R3 and R6. So once that happens, you can see that the router does not allow you to make an individual configuration change as far as the outbound route policy because that the members of the peer group are supposed to be sharing the exact same outbound route policy. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is to actually type the route map to the peer groups. This is done by neighbor. Route map to R3 out. Okay, but how is that going to affect us is instead of R4 just advertising metrics 44 to R3, now it's also advertising metrics 44 to R6, which is okay. Okay, because that route's going to just come back here through IBGP anyway to R3 from R6. And then don't forget to do a clear IPBGP 162.16.34.3 out. Okay, now going back to R3. Doing an up arrow. Actually, let me go back and go ahead and clear the one that goes to R6 as well. So you can see, all right, and I can see that the metrics is also being propagated in the direction from R6. And although that the R3 now receives routes from R4 with the lower metrics, it's still preferring R1. Okay, and the reason being by default, the router does not compare metrics or the met value for routes is coming from two different AS number, all right? Since the route from R1 is coming from AS100 and the R4 is coming from AS300, the router did not compare those, all right? So what we're gonna have to do is to enter a command and that is called BGP, always compare met, okay? And the description says compare mets from different neighbors or it's actually from different AS, okay? So BGP, always compare met, and I believe the task also said that we need to make sure that R3 always compare the MET on routes received from the same AS first. Okay, and that's referring to these two uh, routes right here, since they're both coming from the AS100 from R1 and R2. Okay, we want to make sure they are become more deterministic because by default, the routers will compare the MET between the routes in the order they receives. Okay, so that sometimes becomes less predictable depending on what route gets received by the router first. So to make sure that the process gives you a deterministic result, we're going to have to put in a command right here, deterministic met, which sets pick the best met path among the path advertised from the neighbor AS. So we put in BGP deterministic met and then enter. Okay, and then let's take another look. As you can see that the change has taken effect already now that the R4 or the routes that are being received from R4 is a preferred route. Okay, I just also want to make a quick note here that you can see that we are receiving or the router R3 is receiving the exact same routes with the exact same metrics from R6 and R4. But since that the routes received from R4 and external routes, if we go back to the documents right here, given the met value is equal, you fall down to the next rule, and by default, the router would prefer a eBGP route over IBGP routes. Okay, so and obviously the route from R4 is eBGP. That's why R4 is prefer the route from R6, which is IBGP. All right, and you can see that the document also make a note of BGP always compare met, which is the met to be compared for all paths. And it's recommending that you pref uh, configure this particular command on all the routers in the same way as otherwise you might get a unpredictable result, which ends up with a routing loops. So what it means is since we enable that on our router R3, we better enable that on our router R6 as well. So router BGP 200, BGP always compare mat. Although it's also uh, referring to a BGP deterministic mat as well, but it points to another link, which you can go to to understand the feature a little better. All right, but for us, that's, pretty much it for our task number three.
It next is our task number four with the route origin. Now we're going to have to use the route origin to configure R1 to make sure that R3 prefer R1 to reach R5 loop at 10 through 12. So let's do a quick recap what we have so far. Let's see if we can delete all this. So currently R1, R2, and R4 are advertising R5 loop back to R3 with R4 having a lowest matrix of 44 and all of these has an equal AS path. What we're going to do next is to use the origin or route origin, which has the higher preference right here than the met value to control which uh, path R3 is going to take to get to R5. Uh, what we have right now is the router R5 advertising a route with the incomplete origin, which is designated by question mark right here. Question mark means incomplete. And if you look at criteria, it means the lowest origin type is, starts with a IGP, the EGP, and then the incomplete, which is what the R5 routes is currently having. Okay, so for us to use route origin attributes to influence path path selection, we're going to have to configure R1 to advertise the route with a better route origin. In this case, it's either EGP or IGP. Okay, so what we're going to do is to do IGP. Well, the other one is going to be advertised as incomplete, which is the question mark. And this way, R3 will refer R1 to R5. Okay, so we need to be on R1. And again, since we already have a route map to R3, that we currently have both set the metrics and prepend the AS path. All we need to do is to get into that same route map to R3, permit 10, and then do a set origin. And we want to set that to IGP. You can see that you can't even set on the Cisco router that to a EGP. Right? So all we can do is IGP. And then we can do do clear IP VGP the router and then out. And then we can hop over to R3, take another look. And you can see now how R1 has become a prefer router to get to R5 because the origin has changed from incomplete to IGP. Okay, and this is just to demonstrate how the route origin has the higher preference than the met value. All right, that's is for our task number four.